it's getting pretty cold. Imagine it's already December and oh, it's getting cold. Soon it'll be Christmas before we know it. Oh, I really think I need, I don't know, hold on a second. <sighs> Much better, right? You gotta get into the Christmas spirit a little bit, right? Anyway, in today's video we're gonna do 10 tips to designing a guitar body. So let's just get into it and see what happens. So it might be really tempting to just have a guitar that looks something like this, big block, you know, but it's actually really uncomfortable. It's digging into my arm and it's not very playable. I can't really reach up here. Number one. So the first tip I have is balance. You have to think about things like how is the guitar going to behave when you're sitting down and playing? Is the guitar going to dive, for example, in one or other direction? We all know, uh, for example, about the SG who is neck heavy and it can be problematic. But you need to think about other things like, for example, when you're standing up, how will the guitar react then? So try to make a guitar body that is balanced. Number two. The next thing you have to think about is the comfort carves. We all know about the armrest and maybe about the belly carve. They're there to make the guitar more comfortable and feel better in the way it sits against your body. But you can do other carves. For example, you can do a little bit of carving on the back where your knee is going to go to make it easier in the transition between where your leg and belly begins. You can also do some carving depending on how the neck fits to make sure there is nice space there for your fingers. Number three. The next one is very important and it's called the golden ratio. It's an old technique to find out good symmetry and a balance in the picture. And if you look at something like a Strat or a Les Paul, you will see that these classic designs have a lot of shapes and curves in the shape that the body follows along and that creates harmony. And making a body that has a shape that isn't completely 100% right will sometimes look really off to the eye because we're so used to symmetry and shape that flues into each other. So using the golden ratio as a way to help you in your guitar body design can really improve your design. It can be fun to just free draw something and go crazy with it, but then maybe come back to it and see what happens if you apply the golden ratio to it and make it a little bit more uniformed and maybe smooth out and make some of the lines and curves have a little bit more fluent shape to them. Number four. Okay, the next thing is if you're gonna have a pick guard on your guitar, think about how it looks to the body and the shape of the body. Make sure that it follows the curves and the style of the guitar in a correct way. For example, look at a Stratocaster and look at how the pickguard fits the body, both because it follows the curves of the design, but it also follows the style of the guitar in a more like how aesthetically looks. And try to come up with something that follows the curves of the body, but also of the feeling you want to give to the guitar. Because if you have a body that looks one way and a pickguard that doesn't really seem to follow those directions could create a sort of dissonance between the two and that might actually make the guitar not as pleasing to look at when you know we see the final result and as you probably know when it comes to guitars looking at them and feeling like they're really cool is very important number five the next thing is balance and harmony think about the fact that maybe don't make one horn a lot bigger than the other or a weird thing that sticks out in a weird direction try to find harmony where everything is balanced in the shape so nothing looks really off and weird like hey that part there is not supposed to be there if you see a guitar and you feel like whoa the way it's shaped looks off to me you're probably not going to want to play it or buy it for example now Granted, if you're making a guitar just for yourself, you might not care about if anyone else wants it. And fair enough. But it could probably make you a guitar that you would like more if you thought it was aesthetically pleasing. Number six. Okay, so the next thing that is a really important thing about is the controls. Things like the output jacks, the volume and tone pot. And maybe the switch for the pickups, example, for example. And the thing is, they have to be in a good place where you can reach them real easy and you can interact with them in a natural and good way but they also need to be in a place that is aesthetically pleasing to the eye so you have to find a balance between making sure the guitar looks right and is cool but also make sure the control sits in a place where they are easy to get to and easy to move for example if you look at the output jack on a stratocaster if you just imagine tilting it a little bit to either side it would not be in line with the pickguard 
any longer and it would totally create a weird look for it that doesn't fit together with the rest because everything on a strat for example is very much influent with some other line you have the knobs for the tone and volume and they are in line with the edge of the pickguard and the edge of that pickguard is also in line with the output jack and the switch is actually in line with the edge of the other side of the pickguard so think about those things and try to find a balance for in between function and aesthetics number seven the next one is feeling and place in time. Try to think about, like, are you trying to make something that looks new and fresh? Are you trying to make something inspired by the future? Or maybe something inspired by, like, a retro style? Maybe something that, you know, feels like it's a really old guitar, even though it's a brand new guitar. I'm not talking about Relic now, I'm talking about the, the way the body looks. But also think about the fact that it might come to you in a sort of reversed way, because the Stratocaster, for example, was very much designed to be this sort of new style of guitar, this modern, futuristic thing. And nowadays it's old. So if you make a guitar now, in 10 years, it's gonna be a 10 year old guitar. So whatever you think about the future might make it look weird. So imagine these things, but also think about how they will interact because giving the guitar a sort of style and a look and a feeling can really help you with how you design it. For example, if you try to make a guitar for a certain kind of music, like what would someone who loves metal want? Is it the same kind of thing that someone that loves indie pop would love? So you can really, by almost making yourself into a character, designing something, make something really interesting out of just putting on a different sort of hat. Number eight. The next thing is think about how wide the body is and how thick the body is. There is a golden sort of ratio in between where it just starts to look clunky if the body is too thick for how wide the guitar is. And you can see this on some replicas for, of, for example, Stratocasters, where they've made the body a little bit thicker and it looks sort of off. So try to design your guitar body and keep both the wideness of the body and the thickness of the body in mind so that you create something that feels slick and smooth and cool and not something that feels big and clunky and out of place. And usually you need a lot of practice in this so that you find the ultimate in between, but it's also something that you can get from measuring guitars. For example, if you measure a Les Paul and you measure a Stratocaster, you will find that they are both different thicknesses and also have different wideness to them. And when it comes to something like a Les Paul, it actually has curve carved into it to make it look thinner than it actually is. And that is also part of the thickness design that you could maybe, maybe implement in your own guitar, because you can fake the thickness by just making something like a carved top for example or a carved back it could also be a part of your design number nine okay the next thing is the strap buttons we usually have one strap button at the back that is on the center line and then we have another one on the upper horn or something similar to that but you can actually think about how the strap button is going to sit and what angle you want for example i could design the body here to go in at a let's say 45 angle here and put the strap button at an angle down so that the strap would be pulled into the body instead of out. For example, if I put a strap button pointing out, it would very easily slip off. But you can think about other things than just that. You can think about how you would maybe carve the top here. You might, you don't need to have it always flat. Like you could have a carve in and put the strap button at an angle out like this so that the strap would lie nice and smooth against you and not go out in an angle. There's a lot of things there that you think about and it's a part of the design. Where is the strap button going to go? How are they going to pull at the strap when you're standing up and playing the guitar? And how can I make this really comfortable? You don't necessarily need to only think about that because it, the guitar has to look good, but also it has to be comfortable. Number 10. Okay, so the last point here that I have for you is something that I think is really important to think about, especially in maybe more situations where it's like I'm making something that I want to sell and I want it to be sort of easy to sell this guitar and find, you know, a new home for your awesome, nice guitar. And that is some sort of standardizations. For example, it's really annoying when you buy a guitar and you can't find a bag for it to fit into. So try to come up with a design that you feel a standard basic 
bag would fit into because yes it's annoying to have a guitar and you have to buy a custom case for it so think about those things another thing is also that if you're gonna make a case for example for a guitar and you've made it too big to fit in a normal case then that case is gonna get even bigger and you might end up with something that is super big and super clunky and it's also one of those things that might scare people away from the guitar because they're, they're like oh holy cow am I actually gonna have to carry that big thing that is like two tables wide it's you know i'm exaggerating now but it i've seen seen horror pictures of cases okay so a tiny little bonus thing here at the end just because i thought of it and i thought that it might be important is that if you want to do something that is a les paul or a strat or something like that don't just change one aspect of it i've seen this sometimes especially with like knockoff guitars and things like that they take for example on a strat one of the horns and they just make it a little bit weird and wonky and they hope that you are gonna buy it and not see the wonkiness but the thing is when it comes to symmetry and these curves that we are so used to if something is a little bit off we can pick that up pretty easily so if you're gonna change a already existing design try to change more than one aspect of it and try to find balance if you want to make one horn a little bit bigger maybe make the other horn a little bit smaller maybe make the body a little bit more round maybe change things around a little bit more than just a tiny aspect for example one that i see a lot is people making less poles and they round over the upper part where the strap button goes and they make this little in cut that reminds me a little bit more of a Telecaster than a Les Paul and it just looks off to me it looks weird it looks out of place and it's because that offcut doesn't go symmetrically together with the neck joint and uh, together with the horn and it becomes this weird bump thing that doesn't fit I'm not gonna talk about what kind of company is doing that because I feel like it's kind of mean-spirited and I don't really care to be mean-spirited. I want to be creative. But if you look at inexpensive knockoff guitars of Les Pauls, you most likely are gonna find out what it is I'm talking about. That's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments below if you have any tips or tricks and maybe we'll make another one of these in 174 years. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, I would appreciate it if you did because we need to make this channel grow a lot before Christmas. Anyway, until next time, stay awesome and cool. And as a final tip, Draw everything on a piece of paper before you start cutting wood because, you know, wood is expensive and we're living in sort of uncertain times right now where, you know, wood is most likely going to be more expensive, sadly.